Let's solve this problem. Evaluate the integral. So we have the integral of x minus 2 over x cubed plus x dx. So we can evaluate this integral using partial fraction decomposition. So let's try to factor first the denominator. So we will have the integral of x minus 2 over, if we factor out x cubed plus x, we can just apply common monomial factoring. Let's factor out the x. So we will have x times quantity x squared plus 1 dx. So let us decompose the integrand as a sum of partial fraction. So we have x minus 2 over x times x squared plus 1. So this is the case 3 of partial fraction decomposition wherein we have under the denominator a factor that is quadratic and non-repeating. So if that's the case, we can have the sum of partial fractions as, so let's start with the factor of x. So we have over x and then we must put a constant above since it's just a linear factor. Let's say unknown variable capital A plus for the quadratic factor, we have over x squared plus 1. This time, the format for the numerator for a quadratic factor will be a linear one of the form bx plus c, where b and c are any constant. So the goal now is to find the value of b and c in this equation. So the next step is we need to multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD, which is the original denominator of the integral, x times x squared plus 1. So multiplying the left side by the LCD, we can cancel out everything. So we are left with x minus 2 equal, for the right side, if we multiply a over x times the LCD, we can cancel out the x. We are left with a times quantity x squared plus 1. Plus, for bx plus c over x squared plus 1 times the LCD, this time we can cancel out the x squared plus 1. We are left with bx plus c times x. So let's simplify further. We will have x minus 2 is equal to, so distributing the a, we have ax squared plus a plus Distributing the x here, we will have bx squared plus cx. So I will combine similar terms. I can combine ax squared and bx squared. So I will just factor out the x squared. And we need to add a plus b. And then we don't have any more similar terms. So let's just copy the remaining terms. So we have plus cx and plus a. So this time, we will equate the coefficients of the same degree of x in both sides of the equation. So for the x squared term, the coefficient on the right side is a plus b. But since on the left side, we don't have an x squared term, it means that we can equate this a plus b to 0. Then for the first degree of x or the x term, the coefficient of the x term on the left side is 1. And the coefficient of x term on the right is c. So therefore, I can equate c equal to 1. And lastly, for the constant term, we have a is equal to negative 2. So we already have a value for c which is 1 and a which is negative 2. So what we need to find is the value of b. So I can substitute the value of a negative 2 here. We will have negative 2 plus b equal to 0 transposing negative 2 to the right, b is equal to 2. So substituting this value of a, b, and c in the form of the sum of partial fraction that we had, so we will have a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. So we have a equal to negative 2. So we have negative 2 over x plus b, which is equal to 2. So we have 2x plus c which is 1 over x squared plus 1 and therefore this is now the new form of the integral that we will evaluate so i can distribute the integral symbol together with the dx so this negative 2 is just constant i can just put in front so i will have negative 2 integral of dx over x 
plus the integral of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So for the first integral, we have negative 2 times the integral of dx over x. It's just ln of absolute value of x. For the second one, I can distribute first this x squared plus 1. Divide each term of the numerator by x squared plus 1. So I can have integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared plus 1 quantity times dx. Then let's distribute further the integral symbol together with the dx. So we will have the integral of 2x over x squared plus 1 dx plus the integral of dx over x squared plus 1. For this one, I can use u substitution. So I will let u be equal to x squared plus 1. Get the derivative of both sides. Derivative of u is du. Derivative of x squared plus 1, that's just 2x dx. So here we have created this 2x dx term on the original integral, which is now equal to du. If we substitute, we will have the integral of this 2x dx is equal to du. And then over x squared plus 1 equal to u. Therefore, the value of this integral will be ln of absolute value of u. And if we try to substitute back the u in terms of x, we will have ln of x squared plus 1. Or, we don't need to actually put the absolute value since x squared plus 1 will always be positive. So, we can just have ln of x squared plus 1. Then finally, for the last integral, integral of dx over x squared plus 1, we have a standard formula for this. This will yield inverse tangent, right? So the value of this integral is simply arctangent of x. So if you combine the three integrals, the final answer will be negative 2 ln x plus ln of x squared plus 1, then plus arc tangent of x plus c. So this is the final answer. Okay, so now it's your turn. So try to evaluate this integral and just comment your answers.